Now on the advice of our lawyers, we'd like to give the following disclaimer. We are fermented food enthusiasts and revivalists. We're not nutritional or medical professionals. None of the advice given in these courses should be construed as medical advice. For that, you're better off seeing your health professional. Good, Larry? All right, got the green light. So let's start off with the basic working definition of food fermentation. We say that it is a tried and true technique to transform and or preserve food by introducing the growth of good microbes while discouraging bad ones, and bad ones are ones that can make us sick or ruin the food, rot the food. How does fermentation work? Well, a predominant set of microbes that we grow takes over the food and crowds out other microbes. And these microbes feed on the food source, the carbohydrates, or the protein. And during this process of these microbes just living their life, they wind up preserving the food by making it more acidic and hostile to pathogenic or putrefying microbes. With a lot of ferments, salt is actually used as a microbial inhibitor, or I like to call it the microbial bouncer, because certain microbes that like salt or can tolerate salt, we want to come in and do the fermentation, while ones that don't like a lot of salt stay out of the party. So it works as a good regulator for the right type of microbes. Fermentation is also used as a processing technique. In the case of coffee, for example, in certain parts of the world, when we first pick the cherry off of the tree, and it is a cherry, it's a fruit, and the seed inside is what we want to get to. So a lot of times we let a natural fermentation happen to get access to that seed that's inside. Then when we take that seed, we let it sit out on a tarp or somewhere outside, and again, let more microbes come to the party, and they start to do work on the actual bean itself. So it actually, fermentation is actually responsible for transforming things like a coffee bean and, and chocolate into what it is. So here is just a partial list of the fermented foods that are in the world. There are literally hundreds of them, but here are the ones you may have heard of. Sauerkraut, pickles, kimchi, tempeh, miso, kombucha, yogurt. Now the lists on the left are called wild ferments because in order to get the fermentation to begin, we don't have to add any specific set of microbes. We're utilizing ones that are already in the environment. In the case of making cucumber pickles, for example, once we pick the fruit, there is a microbial bloom in and around that vegetable or fruit that's already there. So all we're really doing by regulating the amount of salt is getting those good guys to come to the party while keeping the bad ones that can't tolerate a lot of salt out of the party. So that's a wild ferment. We're just utilizing what's already present in nature. Cultured ferments are ones that do require a specific set of starter microbes. So in the case of yogurt, yogurt is fermented milk, but it wouldn't just ferment on its own. We couldn't just spontaneously expect milk to become yogurt. So we need a starter set or a starter culture of yogurt bacteria, the ones that are responsible for it. So we take some finished yogurt, which is chock full of uh, those different bacteria, add it to the milk and incubate it. And that's how we make yogurt. So all of our culture ferments have a similar process. In the case of kombucha, we start off with a colony of both bacteria and yeast that work together and they transform sweet tea into what we know as kombucha. So what does fermentation do for food and for us? Well, it unlocks nutrients in the food that we otherwise couldn't enjoy. At the same time, it creates new nutrients like vitamins B12, vitamin C, and it also creates digestive enzymes that when we consume, help us to digest our food. And finally, of course, they create billions of different probiotics. Fermented foods are really the original probiotics. And this is just a term for something that confers a health benefit. So these live and diverse helpful bacteria work and play well with our own gut bacteria. And we'll talk a little bit more about the gut bacteria in a moment.